custom echo chamber concert. A tape delay machine that uses 8-track tapes for its delay sound. Let's check it out. Alright, let's see. Let's take out the power cord. I like that little corner here on, on, the, on the door where you can fit the power lead through. Instrument input. And from the output it goes to my Blackstar HD1R. Which is a little, uh, little amp that I'll be using for this test. Turn the amp on. Alright, there's no sound uh, when you when, uh, when the device is not on. So there's no true bypass or something. And you can hear the motors whirring uh, a lot, so I guess there's some cleaning to do. Let's turn the, uh, the echo and the repeats up. This is the slowest speed, so this is on A right now. So B is a little quicker. I don't believe there's much difference. Between, between A, B and C. Only when you turn it up to D, it sounds a little better. It sounds a little quicker. This is E already. And for F, there's a... Sounds a bit like a slapback delay. Goes into self oscillation quite quick. I guess you're gonna make some cool ambient sounds with the, with this uh, device. Let's turn up the game. There's some modulation going on as well. So now the emulated output of the Blackstar HD1 is now hooked up to my uh, to my sound interface, so I can record a clean output of this machine without the the whirring of the uh, of the motors of this device. Yeah, now I think I've broken the machine because there's no there's no more delay going on. So the whirring has stopped, <laughs> but there's no more delay anymore. So I guess there's something stuck in the machine. So uh, I think it's time uh, we start opening it up and uh, and repair it because <laughs> I think I just broke the machine. <laughs> yeah, no more delay. 
So there's four screws on the, on the bottom plate that uh, needs to be removed. And then uh, I guess the whole thing just slides out of the, of the back door. The eight track you can just remove it. Uh, somebody put a uh, put a wooden match uh, in between the eight track and the case so, uh, to keep it in place, I guess. Very basic components, no uh, no ICs or anything, and uh, yeah, the wheels are spinning. So why it doesn't work anymore is uh, st still a guess to me. Let's plug it in. See. Uh, See if it maybe changed his mind. Ah, now it's spinning again. Just plug in the 8-track. Be extra careful because, yeah, this is 230 volts over here. Right. Well, the motors are working, but I guess the 8-track is, is stuck. Because there's no movement at all. Remove the plug before we start working on this uh, thing because, yeah. Those delay pedals of these days are just 9 volts and there's hardly no danger when you touch those components. But with 230 volts, that's a little tricky. Kind of lethal. Let's see if this thing is the, is the problem over here. I don't know much about 8 tracks. But I've heard it can be uh, it can be opened up if some things don't work. All right. Apparently, with a track tapes, there's a little uh, thing in there, in, in, uh, in a tiny hole that needs to be pushed out. So then you can open it up. But you can see I can't open it up completely because there's a screw underneath the label here. So uh, let's remove that. My first 8 track tape that I've ever been opening, so it's a little new for me. So that's what it looked like. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be moving a little bit uh, a little bit rough. Especially around this wheel. So apparently these rollers, uh, I hope you can see, when they're really shiny, that means that they are slippery and need to be cleaned. Uh, otherwise, they won't have grip on the on the tape. Uh, you can use uh, rubbing alcohol for that. Yeah, there's a lot of dirt coming off. All right, most of the silvery stuff is is gone. All the shiny stuff. So it's more matte right now. Uh, let's do the same with the tape delay itself. There's a lot of black stuff coming from the tape machine as well. Let's put the A track back together. I can instantly see when I turn this wheel, the small wheel also turns. Oop. That's a bit too much. Let's put this thing back together. Let's hope that does the trick. Apparently not quite yet. And I think the motor that's in, inside this thing is also a little bit old and tired. Because if, when I push the, the tape really hard against the mechanism, you can hear it. You can, you can hear it slowing down. But yeah, it still doesn't sound that, that good yet. Let's see if we can uh, loop this thing up a little, little bit. Tape actually moves or not? Yeah, it seems to be moving. Uh, 
it all works again. So let's start putting it back together in one piece. All right, let's put the A-track tape back in with the little match. All back in one piece. So there are a couple of things that I still want to, want to check with the thing, now that it's all fixed. Something's wrong because it's not recording right now, so let's check that out. track tape was in backwards so yeah that doesn't work <laughs> that's more like it so there's a couple of things that I still need to try the first thing I want to find out is what's the delay time for the speed so this is A let's go to B So I see. Now let's add D. That's quite a bit faster. E. And now F. So now we're in slap back territory. Now there's also a foot switch uh, jack on the front. Now, I have this, uh, this foot switch for my Marshall amp. Uh, it has a TRS jack, but it'll probably work. So yeah. The foot switch the bypasses the delay. But I guess there's no spillover or something. No. So that's the foot switch. Now the last thing I want to try is what happens when you uh, when you plug a guitar in to the uh, to the mic input because the mic has a gain switch. But apparently uh, the, the sound coming from the guitar is too low to go into the uh, mic preamp. So let's try this. Let's see how that works. Test, 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 test. Hello, hello, hello. Testing, testing. Hello, hello. So yeah, now it's going through the guitar amp. Let me plug it in straight into the sound interface. So now I can adjust the gain a little bit. Testing, testing. Hello, hello. So that's kind of kind of quiet while the gain is maxed out on the device. Let's try this instead. Testing, testing, hello. Test, test, test. test, 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 test. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That's a lot of noise. <laughs> oh man. Oh, man, 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 man. So, 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 either this preamp is really, really weird. Or there's something with, the, with this mic. There's noise coming from this machine, but that's not the good kind of noise that I want. It says microphone, but maybe it only accepts line level or something because this doesn't sound really that good. But yeah, it works, I guess. Not the best kind of sound. So yeah, that's the custom echo chamber concert tape echo delay that uses eight tracks. That was an overview of what this machine has to offer. Uh, now uh, let's make a song with it.